Excellent. Thank you very much for attending, everybody, and hello and welcome. Um, so today we're here to talk about intelligent meeting rooms, uh, intelligent meeting rooms, intelligent meeting room solutions, and really excited here to have the uh, Dikadata's resident AV specialist, Andrew Upsham. So, yeah, nice hello. to be here. Thanks, so, Nick. Thank Thanks you. for having Thanks, me. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah. Um, okay, so what are we going to look at today? We're going to look at, uh, basically, we're going to look at the problems that people are having and really how to solve these problems. We're also going to look at some of the trends and some of the upcoming features that are in both the software and the hardware solutions that, that are available today for, for meeting room solutions. And again, there's going to be a bit of an emphasis on intelligent meeting room solutions. So we'll look at what, is that, what does that actually mean? Okay. Um, so Andrew, starting yeah. off, do you want to take us through what are the what are the common problems? Yeah, basically? absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I'm sure we've all had an experience of walking into a meeting room, a meeting space, and looking at it and going, "Oh, what do I do?" You know, uh, you walk in with your laptop, you're going to run a meeting, and you go, "Right, which cable do I need to plug in? Do I have the right adapter on the cable?" Um, you know, what input on the display do I need, et cetera. And call, call support. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And, and, and that's such a common thing. And this is, you know, pre-pandemic, pre when, you know, we started using Microsoft Teams and Zoom and all these other platforms a lot. The same problems have occurred for many, many years. And, um, you know, and, and it actually frustrates two people. It frustrates the people who actually use the room. Mm -hmm. So the, the person who works at a, an organization and has to actually run a meeting, and especially nowadays when they have to run a video meeting. And then second person who's frustrated is actually the IT person who has to manage yeah. that because mm -hmm. they're the people getting the support call going, you know, what button do I push? Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, it, it's crazy. We've all become experts over the last two years <laughs> in video right. conference, but yep. these problems haven't actually gone away. No, so. ab absolutely. You know, and and at the end of the day, if you think of a meeting space, it's about having a meeting, collaborating, etc. Yeah, you don't want to waste eight or ten minutes actually trying to figure out how to use the equipment. Mm -hmm. You might only have half an hour in that meeting, and if yeah. you waste a third of it fiddling around. That's just, you know, a lot of wasted time. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So, so what are some of the solutions that we can look at then? Sure. Yeah. Well, the good news is that um, people have been looking at these problems for a number of years. And especially if you look at companies like Microsoft mm. and Zoom and companies like that, they've actually been trying to solve these problems. And this goes back a number of years um, saying, okay, how do we actually get people to have a meeting started really quickly? but also really easily. Mm. So being able to just walk in there, touch a button, get everything started, so you don't have to figure out you know, what to do. And what's nice about that easy experience is it's repeatable. So when yeah. you finish the meeting, the next person who comes in and has a meeting can do the same thing. They can mm -hmm. touch a button, get everything working. Yes. And then the focus is on the collaboration. Mm -hmm. It's on the meeting rather yeah. than the technology in that meeting room. Yes, yeah. yeah. Fair enough. So, so you, I suppose we're going to be looking at what some of the software that is out there. Yeah. We're going yeah. to be looking at Teams rooms. We're going to be looking at Zoom rooms. Yep. Um, let's just have a little bit of focus now. What are the devices that are actually needed in those rooms? Sure. To... Okay. So um, both Microsoft and also Zoom have created um, that, well, there's Teams room solutions and there's Zoom room solutions. And effectively, um, to solve the problems that we've spoken about, they've actually created a set of certified hardware equipment. Okay, so number one, you need a camera in the room. Um, you need a microphone so it can pick up the, the people speaking. You need a speaker. Um, there needs to be some form of in-room compute device, okay, with the brains of the operation. And then you need an interface. Mm -hmm. So the interface, some sort of control mechanism. And what they've all done is that they've gone to various hardware manufacturers who create video conferencing equipment, mm -hmm. and they've, um, they've created a group of tested and certified products. Um, then, along with those, they, okay, they actually are there to run the meeting. Mm -hmm. So the point is to have equipment that gives you that good experience when you walk into the meeting room. Yes. Okay. Then obviously on top of that, 
really important part is making sure that you've got the right displays in the room, which we'll obviously be talking mm -hmm. about yes. this, on yeah, this yeah. webinar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I will be certainly. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so th this next slide here, <clears throat> this is, I see this confusion all of the time in the marketplace. Yep. Yep. Uh, you talk about Teams, you talk about a Teams room. So many people don't even realize what is the difference between an MTR, a Microsoft Teams room, yep. and Teams desktop itself. That's right. So yep. you mind elaborate on that? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and it's a really good question because you're right. There's a lot of confusion out there. And the best way to put it is, you know, um, thinking about having the right software hmm. for the right environment or the right application. I, I use the example of I wouldn't use my uh, mobile phone to do my Excel spreadsheets. Mm -hmm. You know, I can, I can actually read Excel on my mobile phone, yeah. but it's the wrong application there. I can't get in and, and do my formulas or whatever it may be, you know, using the mobile app. Okay, I use the desktop version. The same thing with the meeting space. So uh, Microsoft and also Teams have actually got different software applications for the meeting space because the audience is different. So if you're running Zoom meetings or you're running Teams video um, from your Office 365 license on your laptop, that's meant for your own personal consumption and, mm -hmm. and interaction. Yes. It's there for you to do. And the audience is one person. Mm -hmm. There you are working away on your laptop. When you walk into a meeting space, it's a group. It's a group of people. Mm. The audience is different. And they've actually created different set of software licenses for that space. So you get a Teams Rooms license. And it's a standalone license from Office 365. Mm -hmm the same way you get a Zoom room license, and that's separate from your, your Zoom meetings license, mm -hmm. specifically created for the meeting room. Yes, yeah. Yep. Now you mentioned before as well with this, um, that the MTR is like a kiosk almost, yeah. and it's doing one job. That's right. So, uh, that's right, because again, okay, think about when you go to the airport, we're mm -hmm. gonna all check in and get your, get your boarding pass. It, you walk up to a kiosk, you touch the kiosk and it runs you through a set of um, a set of instructions. Um, and then when you're finished and you've got your boarding pass, the next person comes up and they get the same repeatable experience. Mm. And essentially that's what a Zoom room or a Teams room is doing for you. It's actually creating this easy to use environment mm. where you can walk up. It's got one touch join to start your meeting. So there's a calendar um, on, on the touch screen. And it tells you, great, I've got a one o'clock to two o'clock meeting and there's a join button. I click the join button, my meeting starts, yeah. I get on with it. At the end of the meeting, I walk away and the next person walks in and they get that same repeatable experience. Yes. Yeah. If I had just a standard, if I had my laptop in there, okay, or if I left a laptop in there, the problem with that is it doesn't um, set back to the same experience. Mm. It's, it's, it's for a different use. Yes. So by locking it down, you're actually giving people a better experience mm -hmm. in that yeah, room. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So by not giving them access to all of those other features that are in Teams desktop, like yeah. the share content share and, and et cetera, et, yeah. et cetera, uh, you're making it more simple, basically. That's right. Because we're not excluding your laptop from a meeting room. So you can still bring your laptop in and that's how you run your presentation. So you can still bring up the content you need. You can still have your Excel spreadsheets and share them with everybody. Okay. And that's still your own personal mm. content. But the Zoom room or the Teams room is just there for the video connection part of it. Yes. To give people yeah. the better experience on that and then allow you to get on with the meeting. Yes, yeah. yeah. So a lot of people, actually, that's another confusion I see. People not understanding about that is still necessary, not necessary, but it's still very useful to bring your laptop to that meeting room, Absolutely. to that MTR, yeah. for, for sharing your um, uh, secure content Correct. and so on. Yeah, so. yeah because uh, and you actually bring up a really good point. There's, there's a security aspect to it mm. as well, because um, you know the by having something like a Teams room or a Zoom room, which runs the video part, you then have control over your own private content. So it's not about having just a, a central PC which mm. can access information and somebody forgets to disconnect that information. Yeah. So the next person who walks into the room might see somebody else's confidential notes, meeting notes, whatever it may be. You still got full control of your private information on your laptop, but you're allowing a different set of equipment to run the meeting more efficiently. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Yeah, and easily. Simply. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. <laughs> um, 
this next slide here, what was this again? Oh, that's right. This is some of the features isn't yeah. it, in, uh, in the MTR or in the Microsoft Teams rooms. Do you want to pick out a couple here? Yeah, absolutely. So, well, that's one of the things. By running the right license and the right equipment, you actually get access to a bunch of features that you don't get by bringing your laptop into the meeting room. One of the most asked about um, features that, that actually does exist with running uh, Teams rooms or Zoom rooms is the ability to join another platform's call. And what I mean by that is a lot of people go, oh, but if I have a Teams rooms, I don't only want to do Teams. Mm -hmm. I might yeah. have clients or customers who are on Zoom. How do I connect to them? Or they may be on WebEx or BlueJeans. Well, the good news is by running the correct license and the correct hardware, I can have a Teams room set up and I can actually join a Zoom call. It's called direct guest join. So, um, and the same thing with Zoom. Zoom, um, I could have a Zoom room and I can actually join a Teams call or a WebEx call. Yes. So having that interrupt flexibility is, is amazing, really. Mm -hmm. Yes. So um, that's one of them that's yeah. really good. Yeah. Uh, I, I might just point out this one here as well, the, um, the whiteboard. So yeah, yeah, yeah. using Microsoft Whiteboard, no, I mean, I love this feature because then you can start talking about side of house screens and so on. That's but, right. Um, yeah, do you want to just- Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's the other thing is, you know, if we think, let's think pre-pandemic and a lot more people in meeting rooms. Mm. One thing that people used to do is a lot of whiteboarding of notes, yes. you know, and it's yeah. great if you've got 10 people in a meeting room because everybody's coming into the office, you know, five days a week, nine to five, it's easy. Everybody's in the same room. They can see your meeting notes. Might even be an old fashioned flip chart or whatever it is, but they can see the actual content in there. Yeah. Nowadays in the hybrid work world, people are dialing in remotely. Mm -hmm. So not everybody, but you might have half the people in the office and half the people are dialing into it. How do you share those same uh, meeting notes? Yes. You know, yeah. somebody like me, I actually do like to doodle on a, you know, on, on something, a whiteboard or an interactive screen, which is even better. Um, and that's where something like Microsoft Whiteboard or Zoom Whiteboard comes in, because mm -hmm. you can still have that interactive session. We can still write our meeting notes. But what's so good about that is that the person on the other side not only yeah. sees it, but they can interact with that content yes. as well. Mm -hmm. And it's saved. We don't have to take a photo of it at the end of the meeting note or in, uh, at the end of the meeting. It's saved. It's in our meeting notes and away we go. Yes, yeah. yeah. So there's a couple of ways to use Microsoft Whiteboard here because yep. obviously you could use that on your front of house screen yep. or you could use it on your laptop and you could be drawing there, sit in and yep. so is the far end, et cetera. Absolutely. Or if you've got a ideation room or a collaboration room with side of house screens, yep. that can be dedicated to Microsoft Whiteboard. Yep. Somebody's drawing there and then the far end and, and everybody is seeing it and joining a in. Absolutely. So. And you know, one of the recommendations that we make to people uh, when we're talking Talking about these new rooms and how would you fit out a meeting mm -hmm. room is actually think about how you use the platform in the room. And one of the main things that we suggest is think about actually having an interactive display as your front of room display. Because yes, you want to meet and present. Yes. So have your presentation or Excel spreadsheet, whatever it is. But what happens if you want to make that more dynamic? Mm -hmm. You know, make it a bit more future proof. So recommendation would really be make the front of room displays interactive as, yes. as a good starting yeah. place. Yeah. Okay. Um, a little bit more confusion in the marketplace at the moment as well, uh, where you're seeing traditional cameras with a NUC yep. and so on. So you're basically your Windows-based systems yep. and now the emerging platforms, whether it's neat bars and so on, but basically yep. uh, Android built in. Yep. Do you want to just chat through the, the differences? Absolutely. Between? So. Um, one thing that's interesting about both what Microsoft and Zoom have done is that they've worked with the same set of manufacturers. So they've worked with on the video conferencing side. Mm. So you've worked with companies like Logitech and Poly and Neat, et cetera. Um, and they build hardware that runs both platforms. And um, one thing they've done is that they've almost got these two different categories. They started off with having um, some video conferencing setups where they were running a PC, a Windows-based PC. So both Zoom Rooms and Teams Rooms started off as a Windows-based application. Even though it's this lockdown kiosk version, it's a, a Windows-based application. Mm -hmm. Then as time moved on and things like video bars became more popular, the manufacturers of the video conferencing equipment actually came up 
with the idea of running an Android processor inside the video bar and allowing that to run the Teams Rooms or the Zoom Room application. It was great because, I mean, it reduces overall cost of the mm. equipment in the room. It in, reduces installation time because you've got an all-in-one device, mm -hmm. um, which is really handy. Um, but there was a little bit of confusion about the two, two different platforms. The good news is, at the end of the day, they actually do the same thing. Yes. So, yeah. which, is, which is the main point. And that was from a software point of view, that's what if you chat to someone like Microsoft, they'll say at the end of the day, it's about the team's rooms meeting. Mm -hmm. It's not about the hardware behind it. Yes. They should run and do the same things. Mm. Now there is, um, there, there have been, because the development have been at different paces, Yeah, there have been different feature sets between Android and Windows as there have been between different manufacturers. But the good news nowadays is they're virtually at parity missing a couple of little features here and there on both sides. Mm -hmm. But really for, the, for, for most people buying a Windows-based um, solution or an Android-based solution, you're gonna get the same experience, Yes, which so is the, good news. So the outcome's the same? So outcome's just, the same, matter. really. Just yep. choose the appropriate equipment for the right room. Correct. Well, yeah, yep. okay, fair enough. Okay, intelligent collaboration. So what does this mean? What is intelligent collaboration? This is something I'm actually quite passionate about. You know, looking at, um, how this technology has evolved over the last couple of years, especially with the pandemic and, you know, in this whole new hybrid world that we're in. Um, the good news about that is that the software manufacturers have been developing like crazy, adding all these new features, um, you know, as a, as, as a rough, um, as a, as a rough point around that Microsoft launched like a hundred new features in the first year of the pandemic wow. with, um, around teams, what are all of those features, you know, and where is it going? And, and the, the good news about that is, and how it leads into intelligent, um, collaboration is that people have been thinking and, and, and the manufacturers have been thinking about how do we utilize the space better, the meeting space better, and especially considering the fact that now we've got this hybrid world where half the people are external. How do we give the people in the meeting room and externally the same sort of experience where they're actually talking to each other as if they're in the same room? Mm -hmm. And part of that was let's develop a more intelligent meeting space by making the equipment in the room more intelligent. And we'll go into yes. a little bit of that in a moment. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, front row is uh, one of those items, isn't it? So one of the features that- Yeah, ends, that's right. Uh, so, so Microsoft developed this layout platform called Front Row, and, it's, and it is essentially a layout. Mm. And again, this is thinking about how do we utilize the screen space better, yes. yeah. you know? You know, when we used to have meetings in the past, it was just plugging your laptop into the screen and you'd just bring up your PowerPoint presentation or Excel again. Then we added video conferencing to that and you've got two dynamics. You've got your presentation and your video conference. Now we're going, actually, you know what? We've got this, this screen real estate. What else can we add to that? So Microsoft have created these sort of zones. Mm. So they've got a space for your presentation. They've got a space for what could be either spotlighting a speaker or it could be for bringing up your whiteboard, mm -hmm. you know, with your interactive notes. Um, and then thinking about things like um, chat. So chat within the platforms is actually becoming quite an important part of the meeting. It's become almost the de facto meeting yes. notes, yeah, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we certainly do. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's, it's great. So why not have an area of the screen which brings up all the notes mm. from the chat? Yes. Okay, so you can see who's making comments. But then we've got other dynamics like a raise hand. So people want to speak, mm. especially those people who may be remote. And having an area where you can have uh, the raised hand section so you can see somebody's wanting to ask a question. Mm. You know, it's up on the screen. It could be tasks. There's, and there's different areas can be used differently. So... Um, this is the kind of beginning of how both the software and the hardware work together in a more intelligent meeting yes. room. Yeah. One of the other things points about that is actually the fact that with front row it brings, and you'll see on the photo here, it actually brings the video spaces down to yes. the bottom of mm -hmm. the screen. 
Yeah. On our laptops, when you open up a Teams meeting, you'll see the video spaces or the video feeds from the other people are at the top. Okay, and that's mm -hmm. fine because your webcam camera is at the top of the laptop yes. screen. But in a meeting room, it's a different environment. So here, and we could talk about it, you can see here in this picture, you've got a camera at the bottom of the screen. Okay, so when you're looking at the camera, you want to actually be looking at the people in eye to eye almost mm. as if they were in the room. So they've actually brought the people down to the bottom of the actual screen layout. Yes, yeah. Mm. I mean, this, this picture here, or this, uh, this indicates why it's actually good to either have jaw screens, yep. uh, jaw screens, meaning you go from four people to eight people That's across correct. the bottom, yep. but also it's about, um, we need to read facial expressions. That's we right. need to see mannerisms yep. and so on. Yep. So having larger screens in a room, yep. actually, especially when you go into this mode, when you're sharing content and chat and so on, yep. really at this size, bigger is better, right? Correct, so, absolutely. Yeah. Yep, hundred percent correct. So the the more screens you've got, the more video feeds you can actually see on that. Mm -hmm. Especially when you're running content like this, you've then yep. limited to four video feeds down at the bottom in front row. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if you're not sharing, the rest of the screen can be up with with video feeds. Um, and to see the people, hundred percent screen needs to be bigger. Yes. Smaller the screen, the smaller the little faces at mm -hmm. the bottom of it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, so much of our communication is actual, actually visual, nonverbal. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it's the facial expressions. You can see whether I'm actually making eye contact with you or whether I'm drifting away, etc. So it's it's a very important part of it. And that's a perfect lead in really to intelligent framing. Correct. Because when you've got multiple people in a room and if they're on one square, yep. uh, how big are they? You, you can't read their facial expressions. So. 100%. So, you know, you think about, so if we look at the, the images over here, you know, this is a typical meeting room with a typical meeting room camera, okay? And first of all, there's a lot of dead space, yes. okay? Because you're trying to capture everybody in the room. Mm. But also, especially if you've got a really big room and maybe you've got 16 people around there, mm. the people at the end of the table are these tiny little dots. And it's really hard to see them, see their facial expressions, even recognize somebody. And bear in mind, that if you're sharing a presentation, this screenshot from the camera may be a tiny little box on your Teams or Zoom um, meeting you yes. know, interface. Yeah. So it's even harder to see the people. So what some of the new intelligent cameras are doing, and, and for instance, this is um, one from Neat. This is called Neat Symmetry. They're actually able to zoom in on each person and give them their own virtual webcam feed essentially yes. and that's what it looks yeah. like it looks like they've all got their own webcam mm -hmm. and it's much easier to see i can see that this lady's eyes are closed <laughs> for instance you know this person's looking up at the ceiling <laughs> not sure that yeah. they're listening to the you know to the meeting so things like that it's a lot easier to do that but you need the right equipment Yes. for these features to come to life yeah, yeah. Uh, we actually had one that uh, we were at the ai show last yeah. week we had the neat bar there yeah. it was superb standing in front of it it cut us all out <laughs> but there was another vendor stand quite a far away yeah. away as well and they had a poster of a student it picked them out as well <laughs> and gave me <laughs> yeah it's amazing yeah. and and this is um equipment that's coming out again having machine learning so they've got an ai processor in in the technology and it allows you to do these extra features, you know? Yes, yeah. So not all equipment is equal in terms of a meeting space. Mm -hmm, so it's yes. about having the right hardware in the meeting room to get these experiences. But to future proof, then looking mm -hmm. at some a camera that's got artificial intelligence in or AI in, it's yep. probably a good thing, right? Absolutely, so, yep. yeah, it's what we'd recommend. Mm -hmm. Yes, yep. um, spatial audio, I like this one actually. I know, so, this, yeah. I, I do as well, because, you know, as much as, okay, this, what we looked at before takes care of the, the visual side of it and where people are looking. Mm -hmm. The other thing is that it's connecting the sound to the person. So uh, I don't know if you've ever walked into a meeting room and there's been a speaker at the center of the table yeah. and there's a video conferencing. So you see the face yeah. on, the, on the screen, but the sound is actually coming it, from the center of the it's table. A, it's a disjointed experience. Correct. Basically. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's disjointed. So. Um, one of the things that, that Microsoft has spoken about, and this fits in perfectly with front row, mm. is actually um, spatial audio. And what that means is essentially, if the person on the left-hand side um, of the screen is speaking, then 
as long as you've got the speakers at the front of the room and they're intelligent, then the sound will actually be coming from where the person is speaking. Yes. And then suddenly the person on the right hand side starts speaking and the sound comes from that side. And, and you're naturally drawn to where the sound's coming from, but you're also seeing the person's mouth move and you're actually looking at them in the face. Mm -hmm. It's a lot yeah. better and a lot more natural. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Uh, what we might do now is we might just look at some uh, some rooms, some room yeah, sizes, absolutely. and then we'll just look at some um, some configurations, uh, mm -hmm. etc. And we might just leave it up on this for a moment, Erica. Uh, so if we were looking at a small room, yeah. now a small room, this could be a meeting room, a closed meeting room, or it could even be a huddle space, yeah, yeah. etc. Absolutely. So if we were looking at Combox, first of all, you've got to choose between non-interactive so a combox yep. display yep. or a combox interactive so a yep. combox classic um recommendations that we would say in uh, in a small meeting space would be a, if you're going single screen mm -hmm. then we'd really be recommending the 65 inch yeah of course you don't always have the the real estate or the luxury of putting yeah, that yeah. much real estate yep. in but if we come back to what we said about before mm -hmm. um being able to see four people's facial expressions yeah. really a 65 inch is, yep. is needed at that absolutely point there. yep um we already spoke about twin screens twin yep. screens being awesome because then you can have more participants on mm -hmm. the far end that you can yep. see at once yeah so our recommendation there would be um it wouldn't matter it's up to the end user whether they want interactive or mm -hmm. non-interactive yep. but then for example you might decide to go twin 55s yeah so 55 inches. absolutely so, um now andrew what would you recommend what actual vc equipment would you be recommending in a small room sure uh, well here's the good news is that both from a, the platform vendors like Microsoft and Zoom, when they actually create a Zoom room or a Teams room solution and they go and test the video conferencing equipment, they actually test the products for certain room sizes mm. and they certify them for specific room sizes. Yes. So what's good about that is in a small room like this, you'd probably be using one of the all-in-one video bars. Mm -hmm. Okay. So a product from, you know, a Neat, a Logitech, a Poly, et cetera. And they've all got these. And, yes. and probably again, for a smaller room, it may be an Android based product just mm -hmm. because it's, you know, um, X30, low, X30 something like that, a rally bar or yeah. a neat bar. Yes. Okay. Yep. A rally bar mini, sorry, <laughs> or, or neat bar, you know, perfect for that sort of mm. small room, even yeah. a, a Jabra. Jabra yes. Panacast 50 as well. Oh, super okay. Cameras. It's, a, it's yeah. an amazing product. <laughs> yeah. And um, those cameras are, are, have got a couple of things. Number one, they've got a wide angle lens on them. And what's good about that is often in a small room, you've got the table a little bit closer to the mm. screen. Yes. Okay. So the person is the, the person closest to the screen is sitting here. If you've got this narrow field of view, they might not actually be in the capture area of the camera. Yes. Okay. So yeah. wide angle is good. But the other side of having a wide angle is it's not very deep. So most small rooms we say are about up to a maximum of four and a half meters yes. long. Yeah. Okay. And so perfect for that sort of space. Yes, okay. Yeah. So four and a half meters, that means that the equipment in that room can capture everybody. It, everybody can be heard from the microphones in the device and everybody can hear from the speakers. So yes. the speakers can yeah. cope with that size mm -hmm. room. Yeah. So all of that testing has been done. Correct. We um so you know our booth room uh yep. in, in this office here. Yep. So you can be in we've got a room in this office where it's a, a small room. It's got a, a booth like a pub booth. We've got twin 43 inch at the front. Yep. You can be sitting in that booth and your cheek can be touching the screen. <laughs> we've got the Panacast 50 in there yep. and you can still be seen. Yep. You're that far. Yeah, it's it's, awesome. it's amazing. So, and actually by the way that's a really good point because people don't think about having twin 43s and actually that's quite a good thing because 43 inch on its own may be too small for a a meeting space yes but having twin is perfect mm -hmm. because actually it's about having the real estate more wide than it is high mm -hmm. yes. so actually yeah. that's great again you can get more people across that mm -hmm. um, in terms of the video feeds etc yes. so yeah. that's a great example yeah uh, 
good. Uh, we'll move on to the medium room. Yeah. So with a medium room, yep. um, again, you choose interactive or non-interactive. Yep. You choose single screen or dual screen again. Yep. Correct. So our recommendation here on uh, if you're running a single screen would be um, minimum of a 75 inch. Yep. Uh, and if you were going dual screen, then the minimum of uh, twin 65s. Yep. Again, real estate dependent. But yeah. Uh, yeah. So certified equipment for meet medium meeting rooms. What are we looking at here? That's right. So, okay. So me medium meeting rooms, which are again, really, really popular. Mm. Um, and because they, and so for us, the, uh, we recommend that's up to six meters long. So just yes. gives everybody, you know, you've got to, you've got to peg it somewhere, but six mm -hmm. meters for a meeting room. Yes. The days of saying, you know, a medium room takes X amount of people. Well, it depends on, depends on how many seats you've got on the table. Some people. How strict your COVID regulations exactly. are. Exactly. <laughs> so it's more about physical space. Mm -hmm. And then we can then match the equipment with that because the equipment has to actually cope with that physical space. Mm -hmm. Again, not being too far away so the microphones cannot hear you clearly, yes. etc. Yeah. So for that size room, we would look at something like a Logitech Rally Bar, mm -hmm. or we'd look at a Poly um, X50. Yes. Okay, yeah. another great one for that size room. Um, they've also got uh, the Poly medium room kit which is an mtr created specifically for the medium room mm -hmm. and it uses their studio usb camera yeah right um there's also neat bar again would mm -hmm. cope with that um yes. type of room mm -hmm. um perfectly yep so and those are all uh cameras that would work with dual screen as well because yeah. the other thing to note is that not all cameras will cope with dual screen mm -hmm. so the products that we're, we're mentioning now will do that yes and we yeah. recommend again going dual screen mm -hmm. where possible uh the large room so yeah. now a large room could be it could just be a large meeting room it yep. could be a boardroom yep. it could also be a collaboration or ideation yep. room now i'm going to ignore or avoid ideation rooms or collaboration yeah, yeah, yeah. rooms because yep. that's where you start getting into side of house yep. And, yep. and so on so so we'll just think of this of, of large mm -hmm. large boardrooms yep. style yep. and so on so recommendation here would be um single 86 yep. you could actually go a single 86 or a single 98 yep. Um, yep. up at the front and then uh twin 75s if yep. you go in dual screen again that's right and equipment in these spaces here yeah so and this is a really interesting one because it's changing you know mm. historically there P was PCZ. Yep, so. that's right. You know, uh, you know, for for many years, and this is going back quite a long way. We've had pan tilt zoom mm. products with optical zoom lenses in them, because you've got to be able to focus in or zoom in to the person who may be seven or eight meters away from the camera. Mm. Okay, and historically, that's the way that's done it. The only thing is nowadays, if you, we talk, if we go back a step and we think about these intelligent rooms where we want AI cameras picking up everybody and bringing them into the into the actual uh, video frame so everybody can be seen equally, then we've got to think differently about the hardware equipment. Now, nothing wrong with PTZ cameras, and there are lots of certified mm -hmm. PTZ cameras. Logitech have a rally camera. You know, um, Poly have some PTZ cameras, et cetera, which have been out for, for ages and they all work very well. But the new generation of cameras that are coming out are using twin lenses. Mm -hmm. So they're using a lens that captures the wide angle. And that means the people, at, let's call it the first half of the table, yes. really. Yeah. Okay. So, and that could be from even a meter away, depending on how close the table is to the screen, you know, to about, you know, five or, or three or four meters really yes. yeah then you've got a second lens and that is a telephoto lens effectively and that's capturing the second half of the table yes okay and if you think about your mobile phones nowadays some of them have three lenses on them mm -hmm. and you can zoom in and zoom out and you don't actually even see the transition from one lens to the other lens yeah it's seamless mm -hmm. same thing happening with these cameras nowadays nice. in the meeting room yeah it's capturing the entire room and then enabling the AI processor to digitally zoom in to the people or bring them all together um, a lot quicker than an older PTZ type yes, camera. Yes, yeah. Um, and there's some great products on the market. You know, if we're thinking in the in the Zoom world, there's there's things like the Poly X70 with a twin lens. Yeah. Um, and in the Windows world, Poly have got the E70 with the twin lenses. 
Um, we've got the Neat Bar Pro as right. well. Mm -hmm. You know, a, again, fantastic twin lens camera. Yes. Um, and I'm sure there'll be more that come that come out. Now, for us, we say uh, a large room is really eight and a half, nine meters long. Mm -hmm. Bearing in mind that nine meter long room, the furthest person from the camera won't be necessarily sitting on the back wall. So they, you know, nine meter long room, the person might be seven and a half meters from the screen or eight meters away mm -hmm. from the screen. So again, the, the cameras have to be able to cope and focus on somebody who is that distance away. Yes. And then we're going to make sure we've got enough microphone pickup for that long meeting space and speakers as well. So there's a perception that the um, the, the, the bars, the all-in-one bars, yep. et cetera, don't go, the, won't cope with the audio up to eight or nine meters. That's right. Is that the case anymore? No. And this yeah. is where it's challenging what we've done for so many years. Mm. You know, I've been selling uh, this equipment for a, for a number of years and, and it's always been having separate microphones yes. on the desk or in the ceiling having you know probably ceiling speakers if the room gets too big etc mm. but you're right some of some of the products that are coming out now these all-in-one video bars are amazing yes. the, that yeah. neat bar pro you know will actually um easily pick up somebody 10 or 11 meters away from the camera uh, it's yeah, phenomenal i must admit I, I didn't believe it until i experienced it yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's incredible and that's really challenging what we've done before but that's technology mm -hmm. it's always evolving yes. you know and it's just you know intelligent modern day products that can cope with these large rooms mm -hmm. yes yeah. excellent um just before we go on to q a i just want to bring up uh, one other subject which is not so much about the meeting rooms itself it's more about the the office and it was really about um if, if we look what's happening nowadays we're coming out of covid and so on yep. and there's a big push to uh, to get entice people back to the office yep. why because we know that collaboration is better in person yep. definitely we can produce products and so on and yep. produce a lot of things a lot better in person <laughs> so 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 in order to not just enable people or sorry entice people back to the office but also to retain staff mm -hmm. there's a little bit more that needs to go on than actually making sure the equipment works yeah uh, and so on and this is about ensuring that the the office is as welcoming mm -hmm. as maybe your front room is or your lounges yeah. and so on so of course we could all go and fit out our offices completely <laughs> and spend a million dollars plus and so on yeah. but that's not really going to happen yeah. but there's there's some other wins or some other easy wins mm -hmm. because uh, and what I'm talking about here is really style in your office to be welcoming, to be comfortable and so on. Now, the days of just chucking a foosball table or a ping pong table or the yep. beer fridge in, yep. that, that just doesn't cut it anymore, yeah. right? So, um, yeah, have you any thoughts on this? And, yeah, uh, well, it's it's really interesting because the office is changing. You know, yeah. it's um, as we've moved into this hybrid world again, to use the the term of the, uh, you know, of the moment, um, a lot of companies are thinking about, okay, what do we actually do in the office? Mm. And actually, um, that face-to-face -face is very much important, but it's important because we should be collaborating. We should be talking to each other and, and generating ideas. So um, the environment should um, complement that. So, you know, the, the, the interesting thing is I've seen even this technology that we've been speaking about going into kitchen areas and things yeah, like that. Absolutely. And, you know, making technology sort of seamless around the office. So wherever you are, wherever you're meeting with people, I can just go, you know what, Nick, let me just quickly write up some things. We've just been chatting. That's a great yeah. idea. Let's just do it. And hey, I've got a display right there, which I can pick up a stylus and I can, you yes. know, I can whiteboard yeah. some notes. Yes. And, but but the other point on that is just making the technology not seem intimidating. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, it doesn't matter where we are in the office, whatever we're doing, whenever we're collaborating, making the equipment easy for everybody in the organization mm -hmm. to use, whether you're the CEO or whether you're the, you know, the reception person, you know, you can walk up there and you can do it. Yes. You know? Yeah, that's right. So yeah. yeah. And, and having the same experience, no matter whether you're in a Correct. focused work area or a deep work area or a collaboration area, yeah. it should all be the same experience. Right? That, that's so, right. You know, you know, we used to put all the money into the boardroom. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then quite often the boardroom yeah. was either used by three people. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, you didn't ever fit it out. And people were scared to use it because it, it didn't bloody work anyway. Ex exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, all the money went in there. Whereas now it's more spread out. And, you know, exactly that, whether you're in a huddle booth, a small room, 
whether you're in the boardroom, it's all the same repeatable experience in there and it's easy to use. Yes, yeah. 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 So, um, do we have any questions, uh, Erica? Okay. So, um, one of the questions is, can we have an interactive and a display next to each other in the meeting room? So, okay. Uh, I'll let you answer that one. I mean, obviously, I know it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I see it and a lot. But, uh... Absolutely. And, you know, I think, again, going back to what we were saying earlier about having um, really challenging the idea of if we're going to have a meeting room, let's actually think about having an interactive display anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the good news is that um, you can have a display. So if you've got dual screen, one of them can be interactive and one of them can be a display, you know. Um, the, the good news is the platforms like Teams rooms or Zoom rooms actually can cope with that as well. So they can have, you can have whiteboarding on one side and you can actually have, yes. um, you know, your PowerPoint presentation and the people's video feeds coming on on the other side. Yes, so yeah. yeah, definitely go for it. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. It's funny. Um, I see people uh, putting in interactive screens, and uh, and often I'll, I'll often hear the question, "Why? Why interactive?" Yeah. I mean, look th at the very base level. Just having it there as a digital whiteboard, yeah. that's valid enough. Yeah. But having an interactive screen, one thing you're doing is you're actually making that screen, that room, sorry, that meeting room flexible. Yeah. It, it really means that um, you've now got three positions to collaborate present whatever mm -hmm. you're doing from yep. you can sit at the desk and you can have your traditional meeting or sit against opposite each other treat yep. it as a display no yeah. problem we can now connect our laptop wirelessly to it mm -hmm. we can present from the back forwards and so on Absolutely. but then of course we've now got that third position to be able to walk up hey no look engage watch this get excited yep. and so on and really start interacting with content and far yep. end and so on so, absolutely yeah. you know and i think we're we are so much more used to interacting with content you know we've got mm -hmm. you know tablets we've got phones that we interact with content right. people are used to it you can do that in the meeting space as well and yes. why not yeah you know yeah yeah that's right excellent well look thank you very much for attending everybody